Hi, I'm Day Day Wilson, and I'm gonna show you how to make my very favorite buttercream. This is Italian meringue buttercream. And what I like about it is that it's silky smooth and not too sweet, and it's also very easy to make a, a basic version, and you can turn it into vanilla, lemon, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. I'm gonna show you all these ways to make it into whatever flavor you would like. Um, it's very different than frostings that are made with confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. Those always have a slight grit to the tongue, and I also also find them to be exceedingly sweet. Italian meringue buttercream is much more elegant, silky smooth on the tongue, a little more difficult to make, but I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that are going to help you make it flawlessly. So we start with egg whites, and we're going to be whipping the egg whites up into a meringue using our KitchenAid standing mixer with the balloon whip. This is going to bring maximum volume to our egg whites. And meanwhile, we're going to be cooking a sugar syrup on top of the, the stove. And we're going to bring this up to about 248, 250 degrees. That sugar syrup is going to be poured over the egg whites, effectively cooking the egg whites. You don't have to worry. This isn't a raw egg white dish that'll be whipped until it's cool and then unsalted butter is added. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I have a cup of sugar in this pot. I'm gonna add some water. Just stir that, swirl that around and I'm gonna turn that on and get that cooking. I'll show you what the visual should look like when it's done, but it is really helpful if you have a digital thermometer. So I'm going to clip this thermometer on the side of the pan with the bottom of the thermometer down into the mixture. And that's going to help me know when the sugar syrup is done. So over here, I have egg whites already in my bowl, but I have to add a few more. So I, I left two whole eggs so I could show you the, the separating egg process. So these are large eggs. Most baking recipes do use large eggs. Definitely use the size that's called for. And you want to just be, be uh, you know, aggressive. You want to wrap it on the side of your bowl so that there's a clean uh, break to the egg. Don't wrap your egg on the counter because then you're gonna get this diffused uh, crack and then there's gonna be all these little bits of shell and they might get into your egg white. So you just wanna go like that and then we're gonna separate the egg into its two halves, roughly two halves, but that's pretty good. And then you toss it back and forth using the eggshell and just letting the egg white go back into the bowl. The egg yolks could be saved for lemon curd or pastry cream. Definitely don't have to throw them out. And here we go again. Beautiful. Now, one tip. I have bought egg whites from the supermarket that come in the refrigerated case and the uh, container says 100% egg whites. I don't know what it is, but they do not whip. You have to use fresh eggs for this recipe. So once the eggs get in there, here, let's just turn this up a little bit. Once the eggs are in there, we're gonna use, as I mentioned, our balloon whip. This is used for whenever you want to add air to whatever it is that you're mixing. So you would use it for whipped cream, you would use it for making meringue the way we are here. Very easy to attach, just goes on just like that, locks into place. I'll show you that again, it's just really easy. The inside, there's this little mechanism right here which is going to line up and then with one twist, it locks into place. Tilt head comes down, always wanna lock the machine into place. And what we're first gonna do is just beat the egg whites until they're frothy. And that was just a few seconds. Now at this point, I'm adding cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is an acid, and the acid is going to stabilize the protein in the egg whites, and it's gonna help this dish unfold in, a, in just a, a, a better way. It's going to get a better texture for you. Cream of tartar can be found uh, along with the spices and herbs in supermarkets. It's one in one of those little jars, so just look for it in that aisle. So once the egg whites are beaten until frothy, we add our cream of tartar. Sometimes in meringue recipes, you'll see that meringues are beat 
are beaten in a copper bowl. And that's because the copper gives off a little bit of, um, it reacts with the egg whites and provides a stability, uh, in which case you wouldn't need the cream of tartar. Or sometimes you'll see a meringue recipe that calls for like a teeny weeny little bit of lemon juice. Same thing, it's an acid. But cream of tartar is shelf stable. It's part of the baker's repertoire. It's great to have around. So just have it in your pantry. You can see the egg whites coming up. We're gonna beat them until soft peaks form. So these egg whites, now we have soft peaks. They flop over on themselves. That's exactly what we want. So at this point in time, I'm gonna add some granulated sugar to stabilize the mixture even further. Lock the machine into place, turn it on, and I'm gonna gradually add some granulated sugar. And our meringue is forming beautifully. The trick to this is to get the meringue to this point stabilized pretty much at the same time as our sugar syrup comes to 248 to 250 degrees. If your egg whites in the bowl are done before your sugar syrup, just turn it way down to the lowest uh, setting. As long as they're agitated and you keep them moving, they're gonna be fine and they can wait for our sugar syrup. So now let's take a look at our sugar syrup and see how it's doing. So we're at about 235, 236 degrees. You can see that the sugar is completely dissolved. Um, the bubbles are coming up to the surface really quickly, rapidly, furiously is sometimes the word that um, is used to describe it. And what we're looking for, um, you'll see as it gets closer to temperature, that the bubbles come up more slowly and this is because the, the uh, water is evaporating and the mixture will be thicker. So the bubbles will be bigger and come to the surface more slowly, pop open more slowly. And so once you've made this buttercream several times, you may not need to use the thermometer at all. You can just go by the visual cues. The sugar syrup has come up to temperature and now I'm going to show you something. Um, there's a key to this part. You want to pour the sugar syrup onto the egg whites. You don't want to pour it down the sides of the bowl where it would stick and you don't want to hit the beater because if you hit the beater it'll just throw it out to the sides of the bowl and it'll stick on the sides of the bowl. So you just want to aim right in the middle here onto the egg white and as I said, the sugar syrup is hot enough that this is cooking the egg whites. Look how beautiful and white and fluffy this is. This buttercream, you're gonna love it. Satiny smooth, delicious, easy to vary flavors. And once you've made it, you'll see it's really not that difficult. This is another very important part of the recipe. We want to beat the meringue until it is cool to the touch. This could take anywhere from five minutes to possibly 15 minutes, depending on the ambient temperature in your room. So don't rush the stage, because we're gonna add, be adding butter next, and if the meringue is too warm, the butter will melt out. So we wanna beat this until it is cool. So just let the machine do the work, and we'll come back and check it in a few minutes. After several minutes of whipping, I'm just going to unlock the uh, tilt head mechanism, bring this up, and just, you really, you need to use your fingers here. You want it to be room temp. It's still a little warm. We can't add our butter yet, so I'm just gonna go right back to mixing. Okay, we've been going for several minutes. This is cooled enough, it's time to add our unsalted butter. Now the unsalted butter is at room temperature. You don't want it, um, you don't want it so soft that it would be oily. You just want it, here, check this out. You want this texture 
just see how easy it is to just press a spoon in there. This is this is exactly how we want it. It's soft, but it's not um, it's not oily. All right, so lock the machine. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons at a time. I know this is a lot of butter, but it's um, integral to the texture and flavor of this buttercream. And you want to use unsalted. Now I'm about halfway through adding the butter. I'm gonna scrape down the sides of the mixer. The tilt head gives me great access into the bowl. Back again. And keep adding the butter. Now, if the egg white mixture were still hot, it would melt out, or even if it's too warm, it would melt out the butter and you would end up with a very thin, soupy buttercream. It can be saved, sometimes simply by just whipping until it cools down. Sometimes you might have to pause and put the bowl into the refrigerator or um, set the bowl into an ice bath to chill it down. Conversely, if the butter is too cold and you add it, the buttercream won't be smooth, and it'll look um, kind of curdy, like cottage cheese, and it won't smooth out. In that case, you need to warm it up a bit and you just keep whipping it until it smooths out. And the mixer, I'm gonna scrape it down one more time. The mixer, because it's so strong, this particular model has 325 watts, um, it, it's just going to really beat it into submission, um, and it'll be perfect. Perfect. Look at this. This is perfect. This buttercream, look how smooth it is. It's silky smooth. Now right now we don't have any flavoring in it yet. So what I'm going to do is just flavor it with a little bit of vanilla extract. That's obviously for a vanilla version. But it's at this stage that you could add melted chocolate, you could add lemon curd, you could add, um, I've done versions with orange marmalade, you could add some dissolved powdered espresso, dissolved in a little Kahlua is awesome. Um, so it's very, very versatile, and you can find the variations at bakedpedia.com. And it freezes well too, so you can make it ahead, but it's, it really is great when it's freshly made. That's it. Our Italian meringue buttercream is ready to go. You can check out other videos at bakerpedia.com where I'm going to show you how to use it to frost a cake.